The 25th Nigerian Economic Summit, which hinged on Nigeria 20, brought together the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, Minister of Finance, other government officials, industry leaders and key players in the Nigerian economic space. At the summit, a presentation about the possible scenarios for Nigeria as we approach 2050 was made by Wilson Erumebo of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Nigeria's population was 166 million. It is projected to rise to 274 million by 2030 and 402 million by the year 2050. Also, in 2050, 67% of our population will fall below 35 years and 62% of this population will fall within the working age bracket. The growing population will create significant pressure on social amenities, infrastructure, human capital, jobs, and education. The big concerns for us as a country are what will be the impact of all these on our physical and social infrastructure? What will Nigeria's position be as we approach 2050 in the global political economic landscape? What are the possible scenarios for Nigeria as we approach 2050? And what are the outcomes and assumptions of these scenarios? Now, in developing these scenarios, there are some domestic and external factors that will influence Nigeria's direction going into the year 2050. On the domestic side, there is the exponential growth in population, as well as rapid urbanization, as more Nigerians are more likely to move into cities, creating pressure on social amenities and infrastructure. There is also the worsening ecological situation and the adverse impact of climate change. This, of course, would create um, implications on human livelihoods. And also, there is the unity and safety of Nigeria. On the external side, there is the advancement in innovation and technology, which will change the future of work and skills in the country. There is also the shift from traditional energy sources, such as crude oil, to renewable energy, which will, of course, have implication on go government revenue, external reserves, and other social economic indicators. And there is the um, globalization and migration challenges. Now, the interplay of all these factors, as well as our response as a nation, will ultimately lead us to three possible scenarios going into 2050. The first scenario looks at Nigeria stagnates. Here, the economy, Nigeria will not improve significantly, nor will it wither. The other scenario looks at Nigeria rises. Here, the economy is booming. Many Nigerians are lifted out of poverty. Nigeria becomes an industrialized nation. And of course, this is the most desired outcomes, the Nigeria of our dreams. The third scenario looks at Nigeria fails. Here, Poverty and, and unemployment becomes rampant. Nigerians go through hardship, and Nigeria heads towards disintegration. Now, in developing the assumptions or drivers of these scenarios, the NESG involved industry stakeholders, as well as used a macroeconomic model that explains the interaction of different sectors of the economy. It also explains the interaction of different economic agents like the private sector, um, the government and um, the household, as well as other um, economic agents. The following, the assumptions listed under the different scenarios include, um, for Nigeria stagnates, we assume a 5% per annum increase in government expenditure on education and healthcare. We also assume that emergency readiness remains stable during the period, um, given the adverse impact of climate change. We also assume a 5% increase in investment, private sector investment in infrastructure during the period, a 1% decline in the efficiency of major sectors such as manufacturing, construction, and agriculture, and it, an initial 10% increase in FDI and subsequent 6% decline. For the Nigeria rises, we assume a 20% per annum increase in government spending on ed education and health, we assume a 10% increase in emergency spending given um, the climate change impact, a 5% increase in the production efficiency of key sectors, 
and also a 37% increase in FDI. As Nigeria fails, we assume a 20% decrease in government spending on education and health, a 20% decline in private sector investments in infrastructure during the period, and a 24% decline in FDI. A detailed um, explanation of all these will be made available in the final report. Now, what are the outcomes of all these on, in the different scenarios on key major economic indicators? First, we look at GDP growth. As Nigeria stagnates, the economy expands at an average of 3.3 percent from 2020 to 2050. GDP growth peaks at 3.6 percent in the year 2035 and maintains um, a 3.4 percent growth during the remaining period. And Nigeria is ranked as the 40th largest economy in the world. As Nigeria rises, the economy expands at an average of 9.3 percent from 2020 to 2050. GDP, Nigeria maintains um, a double-digit GDP growth rate of 10.1 percent in the year 2035 and maintains such high growth rates thereafter. Here, Nigeria competes with the giants and is ranked as the seventh largest economy in the world after Japan. The third and final scenario, Nigeria fails. GDP growth, Nigeria enters into economic recession in the year 2021 and stays there for a long time. Nigeria is ranked as the 109th economy in the world. Now we look at the structure of the economy. So in terms of the composition of GDP, I'd focus mainly on the first bar, which is 2020 and 2050. Here, the economy basically remains the same as industry share, which is the blue bar, contributes about 24% of GDP in 2050. As Nigeria rises, if you watch the blue bar, GDP, uh, industry share in GDP increases to 40% by the year 2040 and 35% by the year 2050. Here, Nigeria plays a major role in exporting manufactured products to other countries, leveraging on technology. As Nigeria fails, the services and industries become weak and loses their relevance. Agriculture's share of the economy increases to about 40% in the year 2050. And the implication of this is that Nigeria, Nigeria gets stuck in the reliance of primary produce. And of course, the world leaves Nigeria behind. Let's look at unemployment rates. Still focusing on 2020 and 2050. For Nigeria stagnates, which is the blue bar, unemployment increases to 49% by the year 2050, unemployment rates. As Nigeria rises, unemployment declines significantly and reaches 7% by the year 2050. By this time, Nigeria would have created 155 million jobs from 2020 to 2050. As Nigeria fails, unemployment rate increases from 27% to about 75%. And here, Nigeria loses significant number of jobs as 193 million people are unemployed. And of course, this has implication on crime rates, increased kidnapping, and other social vices. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not where we would want to be by the year 2050. Poverty. As Nigeria stagnates, poverty rate increases to 58%. Bearing in mind the size of the population by then, 58% is a huge number. As Nigeria rises, poverty rate declines and reaches 8%. And as Nigeria fails, 80% of the population live below the poverty line. We look at also life expectancy, which is one of the major economic indicators. If you look at 2016, we have currently about 53 years life expectancy. As Nigeria stagnates, it increases marginally to 55 years in 2050. As Nigeria rises, it increases significantly to 68 years. 
and as Nigeria fails, it decreases to 48 years. Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, we have presented three different scenarios for Nigeria going into 2050. The year 2050 might seem far away, but it is not. It starts today. We need to plan for 2050. We need a vision and a dream for the Nigeria we want to have by the year 2050. Several countries from China, Indonesia, Singapore, and even our African brothers, Ethiopia, Rwanda, and more recently Ghana, all have long-term visions and short to medium-term plans that drive them. I know some of us would say we've had series of plans in the past, but I believe that this time we can make a difference and hold ourselves accountable and ensure implementation of this plan. This plan must be reflective of our regional differences. It must be reflective of our regional strength and reflective of our state's competitive advantages. And every Nigerian must work together to build the Nigeria of our dreams. I beg to remind us that the burden of the future generation is upon us, and we must not fail them. We must provide them with quality education, quality health care, and access to economic opportunities. Whether it's the kids in the, in the north, on the street in the north, or it's the large army of unemployed youth we have all over the country, we must not fail them. They are our responsibility, and we must provide them with these economic opportunities. It's a debt we owe every Nigerian, and a debt we must pay. Bearing in mind that if we do nothing about their situation, they will be our biggest threat tomorrow. We must work together to build the Nigeria of our dreams. In Nigeria, where we don't have to rely on foreign agencies for vaccines, in Nigeria, where a pregnant woman does not have to die while giving birth. In Nigeria, where our political leaders, our business leaders, and our religious leaders rise up to the challenge to shun bad behavior and corruption, irrespective of our political affiliation, tribe, or religion. Ladies and gentlemen, in Nigeria, where our institutions work better to deliver public value to the citizens, and work in the best interest of our nation. That is the Nigeria we want to have in the year 2050. Thank you. Now we await 2050 to see which of the three scenarios would play out in the next 31 years. For Plus TV Africa, Irene Ubani.